Hi Global Family, it's a great joy for me to come and share the love of Jesus with you every Sunday through online and offline worship service. We are studying the hope story in the Bible. The hope story starts with God, the creator of all things. God created a man and gave him the freedom to choose to love God. But the man got a deadly disease by a wrong choice in the beginning. Today, we are going to study God's way versus man's way for the remedy to the deadly disease. Before we look at the Word of God, I just want to start with this question. What are the diseases people fear the most nowadays? A study by Harris Interactive discovers which five diseases terrify Americans the most. Uh, these are the five diseases Americans fear the most. Number five, diabetes. According to uh, CDC in the U.S., basically one-third of the U.S. population gets this disease. Number four, stroke. Stroke was the fourth leading cause of death in the United States. Number three, heart disease. Number two, surprisingly, Alzheimer's disease. Number one, do you know what it is? Cancer. As you can see, a cancer reigns supreme as the most feared disease in America. Most people in all around the world are afraid of cancer. In Australia, they have more skin cancers found than other countries because Aussies spend more time on beaches and outdoor activities. The ultraviolet rays from the sun damage skin cells. When damaged cells start melanoma growing, affecting the whole body. I will show you one video clip about tanning. Okay, let's look at this, and after this I will be back. Let's watch together. Tanning is skin cells in trauma, trying to protect themselves from cancer. But one damaged cell can start a melanoma growing, and just one millimeter deep it can get into your bloodstream and spread. So even if a melanoma is cut out, the cancer can reappear months or years later, often in your lung, liver or brain. And you haven't even started to burn yet. There's nothing healthy about a tan. This TV commercial reminds us of how one man's sin affected the whole world, just as one damaged cell may kill the whole body. Today, I will talk about the deadly disease that spread out to the whole world by one man's sin. Let's look at the Word of God today uh, from Romans chapter 5, verse 18 to 19. Look at your Bible. I will read for you. Consequently, just as the result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, so also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. For just as though the disobedience of the one man, the many were made sinners, so also though through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. I'll read again uh, this passage with the message version. It gives us a more clear understanding, okay? Here it is in nutshell, just as one person did it wrong and got us in all this trouble with the sin and death. Another person did it right and got us out of it, but more than just getting us out of the trouble, he got us into life. One man said no to God and put many people in the wrong. One man said yes to God and put many in the right. Now, this is the Word of God given to us for Global Family Church today. Now, I like the message version. One man said no to God and put many people in the wrong. One man said yes to God, put many in the right. As Adam disobeyed God's command, he brought the result of his choice to all mankind. There is always a consequence after every choice you made in your life. We learned about this last Sunday. As the first man disobeyed God's commandment, the deadly disease spread out to all men in the world. We call 
this deadly spiritual disease, sin. This disease is spread out to all people in this world, just like one damaged cell affects the whole body, eventually bringing a person to death. This is the first question for us today. You know, how did this disease enter the world? This deadly disease entered the world after the wrong choice Adam made. Look at the Roman chapter 5, verse 12. Therefore, just as the sin entered the world through one man, and the death through sin. And in this way, death came to all men because all sinned. Last Sunday, we learned about the choice. God gave us the freedom to choose. But first, a human being chose the wrong way, tempted by Satan. Since then, we have had a sorrow, a tears, and sickness, and disease, and even death. Death came to us because of one man's sin. Some people are wondering why we are under the same curse as Adam. We have not done anything wrong against God. But you know what? Even if we did not teach about sin to our children, they have received all sinful nature from their birth. Now, this is the evidence we were born in sin. When I was a little boy, I had a bad habit to throw the stones over the fence of my house. I was a, a little bit naughty boy, and I enjoyed the people screaming when they got hit on their heads by stones. But one day, one of my grandparents got hit on his head by my naughty playing. With the bleeding on his head, he came to my house in anger, asking my parents to bring a little boy. Then I was hiding myself in the upper room. As I heard grandpa's angry voice, I cried and said to my mom, I didn't do anything wrong. My mom did it. I blamed everything on my mother. The same story is going on in the beginning. After Adam and Eve sinned against God, how did they respond to God? What was the result of sin? This is the second question. The fruit of sin are shame and blame and fear and death. Look at the Genesis chapter 3, verse 9 to 13. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave some fruit from the tree, and then I ate it. Now they blamed each other. Adam said to God, Because the woman you made, I ate. Eve also blamed the serpent. Because of serpent, I ate. Here we can see that the fruit of sin is shame, blame, and fear. When he did something wrong, we feel shameful. And we fear that something we did wrong would be exposed publicly. When things are exposed to others, we tend to blame all faults on other people or circumstances we were surrounded at that time. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is what? Death. Fundamentally, behind all fears we have, there is a fear of death caused by sin virus. What was the solution? There are two solutions we can find in the Bible. First, man's solution. Look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 7. So they sewed the fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. The coverings of fig leaves symbolize all human efforts trying to solve the problem of sin. Throughout the human history, people have been trying to solve this problem of deadly disease by all their human efforts. By religions, through man-made religions, people try to soothe God's wrath. By philosophy, philosophers in asking many questions about life and death, trying to find the answer. 
but could not find the answer. There are endless questions, but there are no answers. By good works, they try to solve this problem. People try to please God through the good works, but you may not reach God by good works unless you are perfectly righteous. Even by self-help, they, they try to solve this problem. Heaven helps those who help themselves. Now, this is what they believe. But men cannot help themselves. Why? Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It means no one in the world could reach God's perfect standard. Adam and Eve tried to hide from God and get rid of their shame and sin problem by covering themselves with the leaves. But this was a temporary solution. Anything cannot cover us from our shame and fear deep down in our beings damaged by sin. For our problem was not outward, but inward. Then, what is God's solution? Look at the Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. The Lord God made a garment of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 also says, But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Why the coverings of fig leaves symbolize all human efforts trying to solve the problem of sin? God's way to restore us from this disease was through the substitute, the sacrificial death of the animal. He made a garment of skin for them out of the sacrificial death of animals. Adam and Eve had never seen God kill an animal. It might be a horrifying scene for them. The garment of skin symbolized God's solution through the sacrificial death of His Son, Jesus. Now, throughout the Bible, God's solution for saving us from this deadly disease was a substitute the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for our sins. Amen? The offering of sacrifices by animals for people's sin in the Old Testament is the shadow of how God would deliver people from their sins through the death of Jesus. Why should God kill animals to make atonement for human sins? This is what the Bible tells us in the Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 and Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. For the life of a creature is in the blood, and I have given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. In fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with the blood, and without the shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness. You can see that? Without shedding the blood, there is no forgiveness because there is life in the blood. Look at the Chinese word for righteousness, okay? When you analyze the word righteousness, there are two words inclu included here, she and I, myself. It's very interesting. The word righteousness is something to do with the me and she. When you analyze the word I, myself, you can see the hand and spear. So if you want to be righteous in old ancient time, you should kill an animal. You should kill sheep instead of yourself. For your sins, with the spear in your hands, you kill the sheep through the shedding, the blood of sheep, you are forgiven and you become righteous. This is the picture. There must be a sacrificial substitute for our sins. This is a clear picture of how God would heal us from a deadly disease and sin through sacrifice of His Son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. No wonder why Jesus is called as a Lamb of God, as a sheep of God in the New Testament. This is God's way to cover all our shame and blame and fear to set us free from our deadly disease, sin. 
You know, this is God's graphic lesson for us to understand how God would deliver us from our sins through His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen? It was a picture that God would pay the cost to set us free from all our sins through the sacrifice of His Son, Jesus Christ. You can see the contrast between man's way and God's way to solve the problem of sin. If we want to be healed from this deadly disease, the first step is to admit that you need help from God. We call this repentance, confessing your sins and turning to God. Did you hear about the 12 stages of the rehabilitation from all kinds of addictions, like alcohol, smoking, drug, and pornography? etc. Now I heard that this in a, from the specialist. The most important stage of rehabilitation is that the one who has been addicted needs to admit that he or she cannot get out of this addiction by themselves. The expert says that one who says, anytime if I want, I can stop smoking, I can stop you know, drinking, will never quit their addictions. The first stage of a rehabilitation is to acknowledge that I cannot stop it by myself, that I need help. Now, this is a really important lesson. People in this world still believe that they can change the world. They think that they can solve the problem of this world with the help of uh, politics and science and technology and self-help. But they are making the same mistake Adam and Eve did in the beginning. No one in human history solved the problem of a death caused by sin virus. You must know what our life is. The James chapter 4 verse 14 says, What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Even you don't know what will be happening and just one hour later today. That's why the Bible says, don't boast of tomorrow, because you don't know what will be happening tomorrow. This reality makes us humble ourselves every single day. Today is God-given chance. Today is God-given grace to choose to love Him and obey Him. Amen? He is the one who controls our life and death. We all need to acknowledge that we cannot be healed from this deadly disease by man's way. But we need God's help through the covering of God's garment, which is the blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. Amen. As I conclude the message today, what is God's remedy for our deadly disease? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness by His wounds. You have been healed. Hallelujah. From the beginning, God showed us how we would heal and restore us from a deadly disease through the garment of skin. You know, this is the graphic lesson as the shadow. There must be a sacrificial substitute for our sins. In the Old Testament, Whenever people came to God, they must kill the animals for their sins. But in New Testament, we don't have to kill animals any longer for our sins. Whenever we come to God's presence, it is because Jesus, the Lamb of God, became the sacrificial substitute for our sins once and for all who believe in His work on the cross. Amen? All you can do is take a, B, step. A, admit your sin and repent and turn to God. B, believe that Jesus paid the cost for your sins on the cross. C, commit yourself to Christ as your Lord and Savior. This is the remedy of God to set us free from the deadly disease and have eternal life in Him. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you so much for your promise given to us today. It's all about your work, not human ways. Reaching out to you, 
Lord Jesus and help us to understand the big picture of how God would deliver us from the beginning through the sacrificial death through animal but we don't have to just uh, kill animal any longer because Jesus you have done once for all who believe in you. I want to thank you Father for the great work you have done for us on the cross. We want to take a new step repenting our sins and turning to you and believing in what you have done for us on the cross. We commit ourselves to your Lord Jesus. Accept your people and help them to understand your work. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.